Hello and welcome to the Discraft Ledgestone Insurance Open from the Peoria, Illinois area. Today specifically, Eureka Lake and the very difficult course they have there. It's Big Sexy Barry commentary with you on Joe Miz Pro, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Calling, Paul Uliberry. And looky, looky who we've got here. We've got the man, the legend himself, Nate Sexton, former champion of this here event. And we've got Paul Uliberry. Ledgestone sponsored, Discraft sponsored, very fitting player to have on this card. We've got multiple Ledgestone Insurance Open champion, Paul Macbeth. Second place last year at this event to Ricky Wysocki. And Gavin Rathbun, a player who has been bringing the heat this season. This should be very exciting to watch. Taking a look at the very difficult hole one par four across the water and down the side of the dam that's a fantastic shot that's being diagrammed for you here big backhand and then a little simple approach across it's just paramount that you get in bounds here because the drop zone From is Olympia, punishing Washington, Nate Sexton. <laughs> that drive that you saw in the diagram was probably 600 feet plus more Realistically, you're gonna players are gonna try to just go as far as they can straight down the hill, not even worrying about the hyzer at all. If you start to hyzer too soon, you're gonna find yourself in the lake and going to a very difficult drop zone. Is this a wraith? This one's a destroyer. Oh, you're going destroyer. So you're just playing as far safe as you can. That's just out there down the hill, and nothing wrong with that drive at all. I'm Paul Uliberry, and I've been playing professional disc golf for 15 years. I used to tell kids who come up to me and be like, hey, what's it gonna take to you know, go on tour or something like that? And I would always have the same answer. I'd tell them, stay in school, man, you don't have a chance. Now, these kids have a chance to make a living doing it, and I just never saw that coming. Professionals we have at the top, Paul Macbeth, Ricky, Chris Dickerson, Calvin, not only are these guys great athletes, but they're amazing people. Somebody that, you know, your kid can look up to and be like, I want to be like that guy. And the parents to be like, I want you to be like that guy. With the crazy influx of people, I mean, discs aren't even staying on the shelves. You know, people come up to me and be like, can I get, you know, a signed Yuli disc? And it's like, probably not. My collector page is blown up, the Raptor page on Facebook. Almost 4,000 members. You know, that's a crazy support that I didn't think I'd have when I started it. No, without a doubt, I think I'm, I'm the busiest professional disc golfer. Left the preserve on Monday, got 14 holes in at the Northwoods Black. Next morning, I was up, did the practice round, got the last four holes in that I needed to practice. Break down shortly after that. The next day, woke up early again, practice round, autograph signing for a couple disc drop, over a thousand people. So I was there signing for two hours. Played the last six holes that I didn't get in here. Woke up the next day, got some practice holes in, clinic at 3 p.m., play with the pros at five to seven, autographs after that, home, dinner, bed. Woke up this morning, autograph session, interview, now I'll have about an hour to warm up and then I play in the tournament. We'll be doing commentary and get done with that at about two. Sleep, rinse, repeat. It's a lot, but I feel like I'm my best person when I stay busy. If I don't do it, someone else is going to, and I don't want anybody having my job. So I'm gonna outwork everybody every single time. It's super important for young kids to start working on their brands early. Take it seriously. I know a lot of people have gone through a whole career they just wanted to play, they just wanted to be, be the best, and they didn't get to that point. And all they have is a bunch of, you know, 20 place finishes, a couple wins here and there, but nobody knows who they are because they didn't brand themselves. You know, not only did I have to play good, I had to do social media, I had to dip my toe into every single thing that I could possibly do. Hard work always pays off, that's what I say. Next off the team from Sholo, Arizona, Oh, I, I'm motivated. I feel like I should be doing my taxes while doing this right now. Like this is, that was, that was good stuff, Paul. A, you should. And B, we'd never give you a job away, Paul. Don't worry. I should keep, be, you know, keep working. I should be doing my taxes right now, Nate. <laughs> Paul 
This is a more aggressive line, a better line. I think my play is very safe, uh, but this is what you would rather do. Mm -hmm. Finish back towards the hill. It's just that the way that the dam orients, the, the more you bite off with that backhand, the harder it gets. Two-time Ledgestone champion, five-time world champion, Paul McBath. I don't think there's a tournament we play on tour now that's locked into the schedule that this guy hasn't won. That makes a lot of multiple sense. Multiple times. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. To your point about this shot being the more aggressive shot, it is. But I do like your play because it really doesn't matter where you throw it you're going to have a manageable upshot into a fairly easy green. Yes. We go Illinois. Gavin Rathman. We've seen a ton of power from this young fella. Over 680 feet on his distance drive at the World Championships. So he's got plenty of power to go hyzer over this dam, like you had mentioned. And that puts him in nearly jump putt range for his approach, making hole one super easy. Well, that's what the graph said you were going to do. I yeah. guess they were just like, <laughs> well, I think Gavin's on the card. This is a full approach with your Thunderbird from down the hill. Yeah, this is this is a good a good throw. Probably 300 foot power at least. Spoiler alert. I mean, to execute it would be a good throw. This <laughs> this particular example was no. not a fantastic throw. Um, Left it a little short. You don't want to obviously clear the spine and, and go down towards that water again, but I could definitely put a little bit more on it than that. Here is a better example of pushing it up the hill. There you go. Height super important going up to the top of that ridge, like you said, though you really have to avoid going long because not only are you going back down the, the spine, but you could potentially go not just in the water, but you can go in those bushes and be 20 feet away and have no putt. Good approach for Macbeth. And Gavin actually having to throw a little half shot. And this can be kind of tricky in this hole. Gavin leaving that a little bit below the hole. This is kind of a decision time putt laid up or run it. I went with neither, and I went down the hill into the into the bushes. Safe, though. Yeah, I'm not in the water. And uh, not your best effort there, Paul. Effort was probably pretty good. Result, awful. <laughs> and Gavin is able to make the birdie. I promise I really tried. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so not the worst lot. No, I had kind of a wide straddle, but I, I got away with it uh, without too much punishment. Hopefully somebody was there with a Polaroid snapping a couple nice photos. Yeah, for that sure. That was nice. And a well-played hole from Macbeth. Yeah, fourth easiest hole in the course. This feels like, uh, you know, it's just a big drive for these guys, but there's not much in the way. This is one you really feel like you must execute to get your round started the right way. you got to give a quick shout out to Nate Perkins on my card. We talked about hole one being Eagle Bull, but he made it happen with a sidearm throw in from about 200 feet. It was a really fun moment. Way to, way to start the tournament off, Nate. Wow, with the forehand second. That's amazing. Yep. Hole two, par four, <clears throat> 615 feet. OB on the right and left. You have kind of a low ceiling drive, so just push it far and straight and set up your daunting approach down the little corridor with the water looming on the left. Paul going backhand. This is just so straight. It needs to get... Oh, again, yeah, never mind. That's perfect. From the tee, it did look a little... There was definitely some sit-sit calls, coming, yeah. even from Macbeth. So you're not wrong to think that that looked a little scary. It just got to the ground really quick there at the end. This is a bit high. Gavin's going to kick left. Into the water. No way. Yes. All the way down there. And we never saw that disc again. Pretty oh, unfortunate. That's a tough way to start the round. 
There is about, uh, I would say, a 40-foot landing zone from left to right once you break the corner that you'd like to land in. Anything outside of that is going to leave you with a more narrow shot into the green. So this is yeah. prime time yep. for sure. But like where Macbeth went, he's going to have to manufacture some sort of trickier approach into the green. Yeah, that was a bit too straight for Macbeth. He needs to get it a little bit more turned over. You're going Mantis, you're going Turnover, and are you going long or perfect? Oh, this looks perfect. A little bit uh, long, yeah. but hey, man, when you when you get that much distance... You'll take it. Yeah, you'll have something into the green. Yep. So not only did Gavin go out of bounds, but he went out of bounds in a tough spot. This is what he's left with after taking his meter. And it's just like worst case scenario. I mean, he was really guarded there and that's that's a difficult approach he's nearly 300 plus feet from his what's going to be his fourth shot so this is an interesting spot because he's a good 280 away going zone flex turnover and that's the problem with going something mm. slower is you can't really push the ceiling because if you do you could hit one of the trees kick in the water you don't want that and if you keep it low you're never going to get there. Yeah, so you're in between discs, really. I'm going with the same disc. Same shot. So I was actually fortunate there. That was turned over, and I'm not sure it was coming back. So, And Gavin's still out, so kind of showcasing how good Nate's drive was. And Gavin just getting back in bounds. And actually on the back side of the green, you've got an open putt. If you do come up short, you have that tree that just makes it impossible to run your putt. So Gavin will have a, a shot at saving the five. This is my star rat. Nice angle in so I can, I don't have quite oh, the same yeah. height restriction that the Pauls were dealing with. So I can just kind of go Perfect. flat to finish. If it, if it keeps giving you a result like that, it's going to be a star for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a scary bid from out there with the landscape sloping to the water, but that was able to stop on the edge. And they're actually checking it to see. And they're calling it OB. It was very close. Oh, Here's Paul from deep. Catches the limbs. Oh, no. no trickle, no, no. trickle. No, no, no. <gasps> he may have flashed one of his five rings that on that one. That one stays safe for him. Wow. By, by a matter of inches. And that is in. So I believe he's flashing one of his two rings because you get a ring for the USDGC, which Paul Macbeth has won twice. Just a stats clarification. Oh, I meant his world titles. That's what I was saying. And yeah. In other sports, uh, they get rings for championships, and so that is how that term was coined. I love it. Just to clarify. I love it. On, on my call, I didn't want to touch my disc. This could be a good lesson for everybody at home. So I didn't know what was underneath the disc. It was clearly out of bounds. But if I lifted it and then there was some trickle of dry underneath it, then I touch it, bad news. And that was where the tricky part, just don't touch your disc when it's by the water. Yeah, let the group make a call before you do so. Treacherous hole three here. Lots of trees and an OB path on the left side. I'm going to go out over that path early. And that is the right. He's calling the get lucky, the patented get lucky call once you hit the left side gap. Yeah, I start saying it pretty quick. There's and really no way to throw that shot without a little luck. 
I, I we can't get too far past hole two before I mention that Calvin Heinberg started birdie on one and two on hole two. First two I've ever heard of on hole two, 311 foot throw in. And now he's more under par than he has played holes. More than nice holes shot played. from Paul. T- overturns it a little bit, gets through, perfect into circle one. How do you make it from 311? I think, is that staying in bounds? Is there any way that a shot that goes in from 311 on hole two? That's incredible. Going to flex play, kicking a tree, and staying in bounds, a rare result once you kick a tree on this hole. Most shots that kick tend to go OB. And a lovely tree at that. That is not that stable. This one does kick left out of bounds for Gavin. I'm fortunate. Because mine was going to hit the outhouse over there. Maybe, you're, but maybe come back in. You're in a tricky spot here. Obviously, you could go down the path, but then you're going to need luck. And you threw just a fantastic oh, shot what here. what a dime. That is phenomenal. That is, that is a spot you have to stand right there to understand how difficult that really is. And Gavin yeah, is going to test those trees out here. Yeah, after that shot, that's a great shot from Gavin. I looked to Nate and I said, I've played this scenario out before. Every time you catch a good break and then you try to test it, five pack. Yeah. So for the long birdie for Nate off the top and a little bit extra, a lot extra actually. On, yeah, it's been a it's been a, a roll away filled first three. Yeah, roller coaster to say the least. Here we go. And that's a different kind of bogey to get the skip off the top and the roll away. With the mini, too. Yeah, that thing wanted to go. Beth with the only birdie opportunity on the card. And look at this thing rolling. The roller coaster continues here. And a rare side of Paul's human disc golfing skills there with a high putt par and two bogeys on the card it was that this time that we lost about a thousand people to <laughs> the, the second card there <laughs> <laughs> hole four par three 423 feet through the woods it's got an ob path down the right side the whole way the left side is inbounds but can be tricky with some very dense rough and a lot of poison ivy so you got to watch yourself over there and then the basket is perched up on this little mound it's going pretty sharply downhill at that point so approaches and drives have to just have perfect weight to slow down near this pin Macbeth most likely going to opt for oh he's actually opting for the hyzer route so there's a new tree that got taken down down that way and it allows you to throw kind of a flip up hyzer into the wood line which is i believe the safest play i didn't see that till paul pointed it out and i don't think he knew either all of us were like why do, why does the hyzer look so much better we always used to go up the middle we walked up there and then there was that stump and this is the old route and it's still the route to go if you want it oh my gosh wow that's how you want to throw this hole if you want to birdie it. If you can get that to flip up just a tad more, that could have been something special. And now we have a stampede coming back of those thousand people. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> wait a second. They're playing good again. Oh, no. And that is going to leave you with one of the scarier approaches on this course. Yeah, it was almost good. If, if it goes inside that tree, I really think it's heading down there into birdie town, but just barely wide. And that's kicking far enough down the hill that it might not be devastating for Gavin, but we'll just have to see what his lie looks like. Yeah, I feel like it has to do with if he penetrated into that wood line or if he stayed out. If you get in there, then it begins to get very, very tricky. That's a tricky approach right there. That, Easily a wrist turn, wow. overpower it, a roll, and that out of bounds is staring you right in the face. I was pretty scared. Gavin getting far enough down the hill that he can also jump putt onto the screen, which is just fine. A par in hole four is great. A birdie is amazing. Oh. 
And Paul getting aggressive, and he's going to have to pay the price for his aggression. He's going to have a very challenging comeback putt for the par. But somehow he didn't go OB. I mean, that thing kind of bounced through there, but it put the brakes on perfectly. He's, he's flashing one of his 27 rings. Nice birdie. That was a great drive and a great putt. One of the, one of the more rare birdies you're going to see out here. It is a rare result. 24 players on the day able to pick up the birdie here on four and Macbeth saving his par and this is a slightly larger field size than we've been playing in most of our pro tours 166 players as opposed to the traditional 124 or 125 somewhere in that range Ledgestone always does it big every time we come here it's a lot of players huge production so many courses Shout out to the whole team, Nate Heinold and all the people he's got to make this thing run smoothly when it's one of the biggest tournaments in the world. And who thought you guys would have been three better on four than you were on three? <laughs> Nobody. And I hope I hope it never happens again. That's Unless we just, uh, I guess, no, nah, I want them to, I want us to star frame on both. We're looking at five, par three, 476. Out of bounds in the baseball field. Out of bounds long as well. One of the most scary drives uh, you can find on tour. And this is one of the holes that this begins the eat your lunch stretch between five and six. If you don't play these holes well, it's going to send you back. And if you do come out of there par and somehow maybe even better, you are going to see a rise up the ranks because this is where people really can throw their tournament away in a heartbeat. I like my lunch. So I, I decide to go conservative and go wide this is the aggressive play go over right at it it needs to slow down because there is oh ob left <laughs> that looks sawed off it didn't look like it had the distance but Macbeth just pummels a disc and that's fantastic nate you like to go with the quasi aggressive quasi safe play I don't think there's anything safe about this one. Uh, I usually that was uncharacteristic in our practice rounds. I didn't see you go for that shot. I, I like to be between <laughs> was 70 awesome. and 20 feet right. That one got a nice skip. <laughs> Generally, that, I think it digs oh down a little gosh. sooner. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised to walk up on that thing in circle one. Incredible. Three really great shots, and actually four great shots, because, Paul, that's exactly what you're trying to do. Yeah, I came into this round, I didn't I didn't feel like I had my best stuff. Nice. And so when you get to holes like this, you know, I feel like that's the veteran coming out in me and being like, I'm not, I'm not going to take a five. Just yeah. not going to do it. And look at that. Paul's not going to miss two birdie opportunities in a row, and he ends up knocking down... The big putt for the birdie. You got to be careful, Paul, because you start playing like that. They start calling you Paul Safabari, and it doesn't matter how many <laughs> baseball fields you go over and park shots, they never notice again, and you just stay Safabari forever. Yeah, well, it's not often, you know, that I that uh, I do that. I'm usually pedal to the metal, but yeah. this is a long tournament, and this is the first round Yeah, already – Shanked a putt, shanked an upshot, roll in the water. No, I love the play, believe me. Gavin with the miss off the top, Macbeth and myself with the birdies. And after seeing yours land safe, I know I would have thrown it in the river. <laughs> sure. You know? Sure, that's totally possible. There was a helping wind, I think. There nope. was definitely a helping wind. We go from the second hardest hole in the course on five to the hardest hole on six. Hole six, par four. 885 feet and the play is just to get one in bounds off the tee if you want to get aggressive you have to go for the big straight shot to give your approach inside 430 feet or so because that green gets really small and you want to bring something in there kind of slow on your approach this is the aggressive play he's kind of flipping it up a little bit just getting a lot of distance end up getting a nice safe hyzer at the end probably 430 from that spot to the green. Walk us through your strategy here, Nate. Well, I'm looking at the cars, trying to throw it hard, but now I'm going to short arm it way, way left and short of where I was thinking. And now I'm trying to think of a new strategy. <laughs> when you map out 
coming over to these holes though. I know that yes, you like yes. to. Inbounds, absolutely paramount. I'm not trying to birdie this hole. This is a hole that I wanna walk away with a par. That's still definitely possible from where I am. But this is more the drive I had in my head. Paul committing a little bit more, probably getting 50 more feet down the fairway than I did and more towards the middle. That's a perfect shot in my opinion to allow you to make the corner, make significant progress and leave you a putter to the green. Gavin's gonna probably push that hyzer, yeah, a little bit wider, a little bit more aggressive, but similar result to Macbeth. I feel like this is where the power, this is a great hole because power really is the advantage here because you can put height on a stable disc, get that distance. If Nate or I wanted to get that type of distance, we have to push that right side as Nate flips this up <gasps> too much. Get a little scary. Get Oh, flashing rings. But then you have to uh, lower the trajectory. And then if we roll it over, all of a sudden, whoopsie, we're out of bounds. And so power is key on this one. That's a nice shot. From Paul Safe of Barry. <laughs> That'll set you up for, what, 280, maybe 270 to the green? That's a very good call, I think, Jerem. That's dead on. And Gavin going for the high aggressive play. This is looking pretty good. Looking pretty dang good there, Gavin. Wow. Incredible shot. Just over the gallery the whole time, carrying so much out of bounds. And Paul got a look at that line, and he liked what he saw. That was so aggressive. And, I mean, if you mess that shot up, it doesn't come back in bounds, you're looking at double bogey. Look at the width over everybody. Get your cameras out. What a nice view as you see Macbeth's disc just fly Jeez. in over the spectators. Parked for birdie. So much trust. The wind seems to not be that big of a factor right now. Is that correct, guys? Very calm. Yeah, not a factor. Okay. Great approach from Yuli and his Raptor. He's going to take the very nice are here on six and thank you paul because i did not know what to do i was out of position and i was like oh you can throw a driver from this close cool i'm gonna do that yeah. after i saw yours it made me feel a lot better and i did it because i did not know what disc i was going to use yeah it's nice to go high speed from short distances on a hole like this that has the nice lush grass is just gonna dig in there well, somebody like Nate, he likes to approach those with the sidearm and with that tree line on the right, that mm -hmm. distance that he has dialed, I'm sure it throws you for a little curveball. Because even me, I would rather yes. throw the sidearm into that green. Yes. But everybody has kind of a stock speed that they throw on. And the cool thing about this one is your approach. You can just pick a height, yep. pick your stock, whatever, um, how fast you like to be the most accurate with and then just aim a little higher. And we just saw 25% of the day's entire stock of birdies. Whoa. On hole six on that card, only eight on the day, two on that card. The wind was a little bit higher earlier in the day. This is one of the later cards, but still that's phenomenal for Paul and Gavin to pick up the birdie on six. Looking at hole seven, par three, 275. OB Creek down the left, OB Road down the right. It's one of the easier holes, this little woods hole that you might find at any Park USA really, except for the tricky out of bounds water perhaps. It's nice to have a little reprieve after those two real nasty holes. Paul getting in between those two trees, his two rings are gone. <laughs> he's used a lot of rings so far. Gavin's going this hyzer play and he's skipping off the road and look at this. I love this play oh. and I, th I think I might try that. It's awesome. There's nothing over there. Just a bunch of OB and pedestrians. But yeah, the ceiling is high enough to imagine that shot being pretty easily uh, doable. I mean, it's it seems like if you've got a good game plan there, I mean, if you've got a good disc for that shot, it's not a bad game plan. You're going with the Z Raptor and followed or following Nate's Firebird up there onto the green. Everyone's putting for birdie. And another high putt. And 
Paul's getting it going now. Three in a row. I think clearly the front mm. nine, the harder nine here. So the score he's starting to put together, potential for something special. I think a, a few under is pretty good on the front nine. You're talking about potentially five or six. I don't know. I thought it dropped pretty quick. It did. It seemed like it was a little bit of an anchory feeling to it. Just Gavin, a nice back-to-back -back birdie. So you will remain at one under, and Paul will remain at even. Gavin, however, a little bit more of a up and down round so far. He's also even with a double bogey, a bogey, and three birdies. Hole eight, par four, 793. You've got to clear this creek, go through the gap or over the top to get even inbounds. Otherwise, you're going to a drop zone. So that makes this par four's drive so important. The more distance you can get, the more likely you can see your way clear to taking this incredibly aggressive approach look at that slope down to the water on the left there's also an ob pond on the right one of the most difficult greens in this whole tournament paul making that gap look Jeez. ginormous yeah that was just center cut and he's feeling it you know i mean he, he birdied five and six that's just I don't know how many players in the field. I know Cole Rodolin did that as well, but without going deep in the stats there, I, I'm not sure there's many more people than just Paul and Cole that to birdie five and six. You're gaining, on average, three strokes to four on the field. And keeping this one low, that's got to get left. Oh, goodness. Okay, so it's inbounds. That makes the second shot decision quite easy, though. Not in range for the birdie anymore. Yules going with the ESP nuke. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and eight. <laughs> this is another hole that I don't think I've ever really been tempted to try to birdie. It's just one of those holes I like to play position golf, so my short drive doesn't really bother me. And I'm just targeting that stump on shot two and trying to figure it out from there. Just classic Nate Safeton. Mm -hmm. I'm going full sendies here. Oh. Aggressive guy. Earning his Nick or his last name back. Paul Uliberry. And Oh no. Yikes. No, no, no. Hit a tree. Hit a tree. And there pond is Pond Scum. Yeah, there <laughs> is Pond Scum back there. And is that retrievable? Yeah. Yeah. Actually it is. If you go in the middle of that stuff, you can't see through it, and you are going to have to have to ask a young fellow to get in there and get it for you because you don't have time to get it yourself. Well, my good friend, Paul Macbeth, actually went in there, grabbed a little stick, got it for me because he's such a nice guy. Look at this shot. Gavin turning. Enough to build. Oh, a little tree direction there at the end, and that's that looks parked. Yeah, it's parked. Fantastic. Oh. oh, here's the footage. Like, Yuli, don't worry about it. Let me help you out. <laughs> that was very thoughtful. Very kind. I think he's honestly trying to get another good kick, though. <laughs> <laughs> A little selfish, actually. <laughs> Can't fault him, honestly. I mean, if, there's, if you can buy good kicks... I'm going to max out the credit card, I think. <laughs> I'm going to be sticking in the <laughs> pond scum all year. <laughs> and so Macbeth from out of position, fortunately inbounds. He, he'll lay that one up. Yuli will take the bogey. That's going to put you at one over. This course, for being open, is just one of the hardest courses you're, you're going to play that's mostly open i mean usually when we see us when you see us out here on tour and we're playing in these open courses it's just birdie 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 you have to be sprinting the whole way here this is about maintenance and just if you can get your birdies and you're playing great but you can already see the scorecard's got plenty of color all over it 
I'm Paul Uliberry with today's Bushnell Hole Breakdown. You can find the Edge Disc Golf Rangefinder at the link in the description. You ever hear somebody say you can drive a semi truck through that fairway? Not this gap. It's just tight enough to make you feel uncomfortable. Then the green tightens up right by the basket. A lot of aggressive shots will end up at the drop zone. Is the birdie worth it? Let's see how it plays out. Gavin with MD3. Oh, over the top. Worth it. Well, this is an island hole, so anything that doesn't come to rest inbounds only gets to advance to the front of the bridge. So really important to throw the right weight on this, move it left is the bigger side. Paul does that perfectly. Going Saxon Firebird. And you're trying to get this just out of sight from the tee box, which usually means it's just enough turn for it to come back. And that looks like that was just out of sight. Oh, no. Wow. Surprising. Just not enough weight behind it. Mm. And this is a nice, safe drive to the left. Yeah, I had a frustrating experience there. I threw my flippier Firebird, came up short, said to myself, you know what I should do? I should throw the more overstable one so I throw it harder and make sure it gets there. And then as soon as I said that, I was like, I realized that two years ago at Worlds. Oh no! You and, already... and then I got to relearn the lesson. So, it's a it's something that happens to me sometimes where I like I make some decision and then it's a couple of years before you get back to the course and you fall into the same trap that that course design got you the first time. Mm -hmm. But uh, lesson relearned, and we'll see if I can. Maybe I'll make a note or something. You really just left. Frustration setting in. You know, before you know it on this course, as Paul sets up this little tricky putt here, downhill, a mm. little high, before you know it, it's so difficult, and the way that I'm playing it, and you, Nate, playing it for par sometimes, mm -hmm. after nine holes, you're left with only a couple birdies as Gavin knocks that one down. So the round kind of goes by quick in that sense to where we're used to these bursts of birdies but if you play them for par all of a sudden you make one mistake yeah that mistake you can't really get it back <gasps> no. oh boy just, just move right past yeah it, you and know, so, honestly that's what i did oof. i don't know what happened there I, I rushed it a little bit hooked on my finger i don't know i told jomez not to put it in the video but <laughs> uh, that was crazy i don't know it's like it's like one of those things where one in every thousand twenty footers you you go too fast, and I don't know how that happened, and I hope it never happens again, but I'm probably it will. And Gavin with a nice little bounce back. You know, he was two over through five holes, and now he is sitting at two under, and that's good stuff there. Ricky Wysocki off to a fire emoji start, as well as Cole Verdalen, seven under a piece on that front nine. That is incredible to go into the back nine with that kind of confidence. Absolutely. Those are some incredible starts from a lot of players, really. But what else would you expect on the Disc Golf Pro Tour? Thank you so much to the Founders Club. We've got nine more holes coming to you from Lake Eureka today. Come on right back.